Hey everybody, welcome to my Let's Play of Ristar. Hope you enjoy this, and now a little narration. In a far off galaxy, an evil force is at work. The evil tyrant Greedy, they aren't even being subtle, has corrupted the planet's leaders and enslaved the populace. Even the legendary hero has been captured. A desperate plea for help is made. Made to who? Eh. Who cares? <laughs> And answered by the hero's own son. Right, so this is Ristar, or Ristar. I I still don't know how to pronounce it. Probably look it up later and figure out I'm been pronouncing it wrong or right this whole time. So without further ado, let's let's start the game. <laughs> That's just adorable. This game is really fun, actually. <laughs> oh. 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 Climb backwards! Wow! <laughs> I've got to say, the graphics on this are really good. And it's really beautiful. I really need like another star, but hey, another life is good too. Right. Oh, sweet. I have no idea why there has been a sequel to this. I mean, I have died. I mean, I guess I get what I failed. Why it failed because the Saturn was coming out. If it hadn't come out already, why it was coming? Well, it was coming out. I now remember. So if this was released on the Saturn, maybe it would have done better. I don't know, but I guess quirky little 2D platformers were starting to go the way of a way of Dodo or something like that. Even though Klonoa did fairly well a little later, so I really have no idea. But in terms of cameos, Sega's been giving this guy, little guy some love. I mean, he's been in... Uh, I believe he's cameoed in Sega All Stars Tennis. He's cameoed in Shemu 2. And. There's some other games that I think he's cameoed in. Just can't recall at the moment. Apparently, Sega loved the concept of that the star has for stretchy arms because they've reused it in Sonic Unleashed. Funny, considering that um, the design of Ristar was based off a rejected design for Sonic. Now it's coming full circle. Let's see if I can get a really good height bonus this time. Yes! Alright, so 200 points is good. Better than zero. <laughs> Alright, now we're entering the Dark Woods. I always wonder why I'm a I attacked this guy. I mean, he's not bothering me. The guy that I that popped up and became the level was definitely bothering me, but I guess because he's probably a minion of greedy. 
by the way, that's that's the least subtle name for villain ever. It's like, hey, I'm greedy. Might as well call me Eel McEverson or something like that. Oh, oh, oh! Come on. Okay, let's, let's try to get that. Oh, oh, crap. I have an idea. That probably... If you're watching this, you're probably screaming, Yeah, this is what you should be doing! Perhaps using the enemy to get across. Now, if the enemy will hold still... Alright, so... I didn't really want a gem, but that's good. I need some help. Even he's surprised that he can do that. <laughs> when I read about their- and then I just died. I, when I read I saw they cut so many cute animations from the game for Ristar to make them seem more aggressive. Um, it's, it's funny how we try and make cute video game characters seem more angry and serious and when we bring them over here. Yep, he still retains some of his Kilo quirks, and this game still retains some of the Kilo quirks. And it, like his voice and him saying "Play with me" at the beginning of a, a video, a video game. Excuse me. Oh, oh crap! I think we're near the end of the level, so that's good. What are these enemies' names anyway? I mean, I know there are probably minions of this greedy guy, but I'd like to know what the names of these guys are exactly. Uh, pro probably look at wikis or the instruction mail, and I died again. Dang it. This game might seem like just a child, <laughs> childish game, but is this thing can get pretty difficult. I hear... I hear it was easier in Japan, which is actually rather surprising since considering the Mario 2 situation, that's rather surprising that a game would be harder here than it is in Japan. Stupid. Oh, this is cool. Look, look at that. that. That that's just cool. I mean, yes, and it was. It's pretty standard for games to have cool lighting effects like this. But to see it done back in the day, like back in with the Genesis, is just remarkable. And I died again. I mean, just look at it, it's just, it is beautiful. Oh, here's that guy again, and I hope I'm not hit by anybody else. But I'm probably going to be hit again. And here we go, that's me below. Sweet, 500 points. All right, then now we're on. Now we're on to the boss, boss area, boss arena. Excuse me. Riho is coming. Now, what I don't know is is Riho the name of the guy that this greedy minion is. Possessed? Well, you well, you see what I'm talking about in a bit, but there's this little guy on the back of this guy. You know, 
I see, is Riho this guy? Or is the guy on his back Riho? I, I love how the boss changes color. It reminds me of Space Harrier. You guys remember that game, Space Harrier? I realize that when I all the games that I mentioned are probably way, way before my time, but still, it's nice to play the classics. And I personally find some classics a bit more enjoyable than some modern games, but that doesn't mean all modern games are bad. Plenty of modern games are really, really fun. Case Book, Batman, Arkham games, and plenty of upcoming titles I'm seeing for Wii U and also the other next gen systems such as Watch Dogs, um, Splatter. Spl I, can't, I can't remember the name, Splatter something, but. And of course, most Mario, Zelda, Sonic, and pretty much any games that are part of a long-running franchise are pretty much good. Most of them are good. There are some exceptions, and now we're going on to the next area. Whoa! Alright then. This is the underwater area. Every game is probably required to have at least one underwater area. Unless it's a racing game. But it would be cool to race underwater. Why do I attack that fish? Just it's just minding its own business. Probably everything's out to get you here, but it doesn't seem that way. Or maybe he's just maybe he's a hunter. I don't I don't know. It's like some games the enemies are just walking around and it and you attack them. So sometimes I wonder, like, why am I attacking this guy? Of course, when you start getting to philosophical deba debacles, philosophical queries about video games, then you might want to stop playing video games for a little bit, but hey, that's not stopping me. I also like how he can apparently breathe underwater. And apparently Mario can too. <laughs> what? What is Sonic the only... Sonic and R, I guess most RPG characters the only characters that can't breathe underwater? Are there any other video game characters where you have to, um... I recall to the surface after a certain turn out of time or have to collect air bubbles that, that's what I was expecting to have to do when I when this underwater level oh wow that, that hurt sweet I got this blue star which gives me most of my health back Oh! Alright, count this up, we hit again. Oh, oh, that's too close. Some mechanics in this game remind me of Klonoa, you know, like grabbing your enemies and then transforming into something else. And, and sword can give you like some forward motion, but not much. It's probably just gonna be a little animation. It's actually stopping you a bit. So, 
Yeah, it's like Planoa, at the same time it's not. Alright. The Lost Palace. That, that is a cool name. Can I just say that I love this music? I mean, I mean, Skim Skim's journal, it's just, it's just so varied. And it fits the environments real well. Oh, 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 crap. That blue guy's face reminds me of that blue guy from the- You remember? I, I don't know that guy's name specifically, but... It's, it's one of the guys from... From Doom, I just... I don't know if you could kill him, I don't know what exactly that guy served in that game, but that's just what it reminded me of. I like how if you kill this guy, then all the things that dispensed are killed as well. That That's cool. Makes things a bit easier. I'm on that. <laughs> Can I find a thing that doesn't have? Yes. I did not want another seahorse or whatever those things are called. You you try to call them regular animal names in video games when you turn out for something else. Like for example, the snake in Legend of Zelda. It's called rope, and of course, it's not a rope. supposed to go. Where is the guy that's been sink? Oh, there's another enemy, so that might help. That snail guy's awake, woken up yet. He's not woken up, so I need to defeat some more of these guys. Ah, oh, crap. At least starts you off right back where you left off. That's pretty cool. Sweet, some gems! Those look exactly like the Chaos Emeralds from Sonic... Well, actually, I think m most of the Sonic Classic series games have that design for the Chaos Emeralds. This reminds me of a level from Sonic Adventure called Skydeck, where you have to hold on to um, structures on the ship. Except in that, you can't destroy whatever's causing turbulence. Because the turbulence is natural in that, while this is being caused by, I guess, a motor or a fan or whatever that's called. This guy's just frozen in place. I mean, do we need water to touch them before? You know, let's let's see if if I let water touch them if they'll start moving. Yep! I knew it, they just needed water. What would that just be creepy if you saw, like, a fish suspended in air and as soon as... 
like if there was like water covering it, it would just go back to life, go back to life, something like that. That would just be creepy in my opinion. Oh crap. I think I'm near the end of this level. So let's see. Oh crap! So I have four containers left. But let's hope I don't lose any more continues. Or lives for that matter. I feel like Ristar is one of those games that really needs revival. I mean, it's I'm seeing that's developed quite a cult following, and I and the game's already on Steam, the standalone. So why not just make a Ristar too? I mean, should it be a major console release? Probably not. I mean, it doesn't have that big of a following, but let's have a download title maybe. That'd be nice. We have like a downloadable wrist art too, just like we had a Sonic 4. Well, yeah, technically, it's a sequel to the original game, so that's not exactly the same situation. But you get what I mean. Alright, we're just gonna speed through this level right here. I'm pretty sure this is approximately the place where we left off. Might be a little before, but ah, who cares? Please do not hit me with your- Ah, oh, crap. At least starts you right back where you left off, but still. Crap. I think for Genesis had better sound than people will give a credit for. I mean, yes, I can't replicate, like, a full-scale orchestra, as well as the Super Nintendo cam, but still has its own little charm, and it can still replicate instruments fairly well. I mean, I mean if you want CD quality um, audio on the Sega Genesis, then get a Sega CD. But what's worth? The Sega Genesis had really good audio. I mean, I prefer the stylized audio, even if it was technical limitations, than the, just the unstylized audio of the Super Nintendo at times. I mean, it was because of the technical limitations that we have the cool sounds of music that we do in the Genesis games. I mean, are there times where this, this, the technical limitations of its Sega Genesis hinder it in the audio department? Absolutely! But when used correctly, when used to its fullest, then it really becomes just, just an advantage to the Genesis. 
I mean, I can say that, yes, this is Genesis Audio, but I can't necessarily save it for Super Nintendo because Super Nintendo Audio could sound like, well, DOS Audio sometimes. And vice versa for Sega Genesis sometimes, but you get the point. For the most part, Genesis FM synthesis in general is just really cool to me. It sounds really cool to me, and even though well, the, the non FM synthesis is technically superior, I still think this sounds a bit better than than the Super Nintendo's sound chip. Even if it... In terms of replicating, like, real music, yes, this is not as good, but... Still, for what it's worth, it's really good. And I'm probably gonna get... a lot of flack for trying to insist that Sega Genesis has better audio than Super Nintendo. But, in reality... I'm just speaking from what I hear, and even though it, it does replicate, doesn't replicate the instruments as well as Super Nintendo, I feel like the style of most Sega Genesis games' music is just a bit better. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't try to replicate a full orchestra for the most part. But it just focuses on being represent representative of the game. In this game, I I do not feel like the audio of a Super Nintendo would have given it the same feel and I died. I mean it, it sounds very biased of me, but in reality, I'm just saying this so I have something to talk about while I do this game. <laughs> this boss is really tricky, so I should probably focus on the boss and not focus on <laughs> the audio synthesis of Sega Genesis versus the Super Nintendo. Alright, so I need him two more times and then we are out of here. Oh crap! I hate these guys! Woo! That was close. Alright. Even. One more hit, he's done, one more hit, I'm done. Oh! And I died. I have to do all that again, so see you when he has one hit left again. Alright, so now I think we're close to beating him. I have more help on him, and I know his tricks, so I should be able to avoid him. Oh, crap! Yes! Alright! And that ends this part of the Let's Play. I hope you liked it, and if you if you do, then and you want to see more of it, then please, please like this video, share with friends, so they can view it. I know this is pretty long. I'm not entirely sure if it'll ever be longer. Do you want longer videos and less parts, or more parts and shorter videos? Let me know. Well, anyways, this is Connor here. Same peace and love. Peace and love. And I'll see you next time.